Today we are talking about the sprite monsters. I am currently using Dueling Book because Master Duel doesn't have them quite yet. The cards are confirmed to be coming on Tuesday the 14th. On Tuesday the 14th, this is the set of them that is presumably coming. I'm relatively sure we're not going to get Double Cross and Sprint. That those will come in a later update, but we should be getting the rest. They have said that Gigantic Sprite and Elf are ultra rares. We know that Gigantic Sprite and Elf are ultra rares from the announcement, and because they are semi-limiting starter, we can be reasonably confident that that's also going to be an ultra rare. Today, I'm trying to just discuss how Sprite will work. It's going to be a little different in Master Duel than it was in the TCG, especially because of Maxi being legal. But there are a ton of variants of the deck to play. Uh, there is a best one. We have exhaustively played this deck over the last six months. Not so much very lately due to the Tierlament uh, Earth Fairy Ishizu-esque cards that have just been dominating TCG since like November. From July to November of 2022 was all Sprite. We have had plenty of games without Toad and stuff and the different things that you can do with the deck and all the different variants, and I'm gonna go over all of them. Before I get into like variants of it, you should know what the sprite cards are. First and foremost, they have five main deck monsters. This is the one that you just kind of don't play. A lot of people do, and you should know it exists because on Master Duel a lot of people are gonna use it. They just, they're not gonna know better, and they'll cheese one out of ten games with it, and through confirmation bias keep it in their deck. That's a very common thing. The first thing to know is that every sprite monster says if you control a level slash rank or link depending monster with a two, you can special summon this card from your hand and then you can only special summon them once per turn that way and then they just do other things. The sprite monsters come in two categories. You have what I call them the searchers and the negators. You can think of them however you like but all of them are thunder monsters. Half of them are dark half of them are fire. And then this guy's also dark, but I don't even really consider him when I'm thinking about it. You have the two searching ones, and you have the two negating ones. The searching ones are dark, the negating ones are fire. The link monster is fire, the Xyz monster is dark. The Xyz specials from the deck, the link specials from the graveyard, but the fire ones because the link is fire, say if you have a level or link to monster, and the dark ones say a level or rank to monster, like the Xyz. And that's the easy way to remember that part. You have the two guys that search the deck that say level or rank, they're dark, they go with the Xyz. You have the two that negate a monster or a spell or trap, and they are fire, like the link monster, and they special summon if you have a level or link to monster. None of them do anything when you normal summon them. They all can be special summoned from your hand the same way once per turn. Then they all just have a field effect. These two say when they're special summoned, do blank. In this case, it's search your deck for a sprite monster, except for himself. This one is search your deck for a sprite speller trap. This one says, if a monster effect is activated, you contribute one other two monster. Instead of saying level slash rank slash link, I'm just going to call them two monsters. Uh, you contribute a two monster, negate the effect. Then if the two monster was in the extra deck, rank or link two monster, I, should, I shouldn't say extra deck because of synchros and fusions. If you tribute a rank or link two monster to activate this effect, you also destroy what you negate. And that's going to happen over here as well. With this one, you tribute a two monster to negate a spell or trap, and then if it was a level, I say a rank or link two monster, you can destroy the card that you negated. So you've got pretty basically just front row, back row negates, monster and spell trap searches. And it's just two dark guys, two fire guys, they're all thunders, they all special summon basically the same way, fires with the links. Um, darks with Xyz monsters. It's honestly really easy. It starts off complicated, but gets super easy to remember. Uh, outside of that, 
their stats go 10, 11, 12, 13 for the attack points. And it goes back and forth, fire, dark, fire, dark, on the way up. And I don't really have a good mnemonic device for you to remember which one's the 13 and like which one's the 12 and stuff like that. Just know that they go in order, 10, 11, 12, 13. And it matters because of starter. Uh, starter burns you for the attack points of the monster. This is the primary spell that Jet can search for. It is a quick play that special summons a sprite monster from your deck, but you lose life points equal to its attack, and then you get locked into two monsters for the rest of the turn. If you already used it to get to, say, blue into Jet, then Jet has another spell to get, and this is a very good spell. Uh, if you, you banish a Springins, Therian, or Sprite card from your hand or graveyard, so basically banish a sprite card from your graveyard to activate one of these effects. Special Springin, you don't play any. Special Etherian, you don't play any. Uh, banish a level, rank, or link two monster you control and one card your opponent controls. So when you've finished up your sprite combo and you set this card, you can banish the starter from your graveyard to banish one of your opponent's cards without targeting it as long as you have a two monster on your field to banish as well. Smashers is very, 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 very good. Like, obnoxiously so. Um, there is uh, Gamma Burst, which gives everyone 1400 attack and defense until the end of the turn. And then you could banish it from your graveyard to target a two monster and give it 1400 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. Again, this card is fantastically unnecessary. Some people may play it. If you find yourself with like 2,000 life left, don't think that they won't just have this card and kill you. Again, a lot of people in Master Duel, especially in the lower ranks, uh, bronze and stuff, they're going to be very attracted to card effects that say, make your monster really big. And that's what Pixies does. Pixies is just honest. Uh, send this card from your hand to the graveyard. That monster gains attack equal to the opponent's monster's attack until the end of the turn. So it just basically makes your guy really big. It makes it the biggest guy on the board. Um, that, that's really all there is to it. This is maybe a one of if you have space, but you shouldn't have space for this. Uh, I'm not going to go over the other two because they're not coming in this update. Uh, there is Sprite Elf. This is two monsters, including a level rank or link two monster. The other monster can be anything, and that's a pretty big deal. That means... Anytime you summon a Charmer Link monster, uh, there's a Link 2, and it takes an opponent's monster. So you now have two monsters, including a Link 2. You could make Elf with that. Uh, it cannot be used as a Link material to turn it summoned, so it's going to just stay in your extra monster zone until your opponent's turn. Your opponent can't target monsters it points to with card effects, and that's huge. It's really good for insulating your end board against things like infinite and permanence. During the main phase, you can target a level 2 monster in your graveyard and special summon it. And it can choose a rank or link 2 monster if your opponent controls a monster as well. And that's a quick effect. That's the effect that got Totally Awesome banned. Because Totally Awesome contributed itself to negate something and take it, and then Sprite Elf could revive the Totally Awesome, and Totally Awesome was not once per turn. So it could tribute itself and take something again. Sprite Smashers is basically just Spellbook of Fate with worse other effects. So Gigantic Sprite is the crazy one. Like, obviously Elf is the best one, but Gigantic Sprite is really what makes this deck just go off and do everything. If they banned this card, then Sprite as a deck wouldn't exist. Elf would still be used in a bunch of other decks. It is absolutely absurd and should never have been printed. But banning Elf doesn't kill the Sprite deck. Banning Gigantic Sprite does. This is the card that makes Sprite a deck. Gigantic Sprite says you can actually use Link 2 monsters as if they were level 2 monsters for its Xyz summon, and it's 1600-1600. And as long as it has an extra deck monster as a material, it's actually 3200. It's very, very big. Uh, it detaches a material to special summon a level 2 monster from your deck, but most importantly, both players get level 2 locked until the end of that turn. So your opponent can't summon a monster that's higher than level 2. This means they can't use something like Cyframe Gamma, because it can't summon Driver. They can't use Nibiru, because it's 11 stars. 
They can't use Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. It's level 7, I believe. And so on and so forth. They can't actually put a monster into play. So Gigantic Sprite basically makes it impossible to use Nibiru on the Sprite deck. That's always been its, like, big bread and butter is that there is like no hand trapping this deck. If I normal summon Sprite Red and I special blue and you Veiler my search, good for you, overlay them for Gigantic Sprite, detach, get the jet from my deck anyway, still get starter, starter get the other red, so I still have my red in play and my Gigantic Sprite in play. Your Veiler didn't do anything. Uh, if you have like Nibiru, it's just a normal summon, a special summon, Gigantic Sprite is three, the monster from the deck is four, and you can't use Nibiru. Uh, if you have Ash Blossom and Effect Veiler, and I normal summon Sprite Red, Special Blue, and you Veiler it, and I overlay for Gigantic Sprite and Detach, and you Ash it, I still have a rank two in play. So any other Sprite card in my hand is still an extender to still special summon, go into Elf, bring something back, the thing I normal summoned hasn't used its effect yet this turn, and so on and so forth. Like, you still play through so many hand traps. It's almost impractical to play hand traps at all, uh, which you'll notice in my variant of the deck that I have built. It's also true that because the sprite engine's so small, the first variant of the deck we're going to talk about is just pure sprite where you just play three starter, three jet, three blue, two or more reds, a carrot, and two, one to three smashers as just like a sprite package of like 18 cards and then like 22 back row hand traps. Like just every hand trap you can think of. So there are a few variants of the sprite deck and the thing that most of them have in common is a weakness to things like Super Polymerization, Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplet. That, that front row getting negated, Dark Ruler No More is the big one, was just the end of the game for sprites. Uh, they were losing to Regeki so bad that they started side decking Muckracker from the Underworld, but we don't have that in Master Duel. There's a lot that goes into the variance of it. But the first one that we're talking about is the pure version with tons and tons of hand traps. You want to special summon all of your sprite guys. So you need basically a normal summon. Some level two to just get you started. Preferably by doing as much as possible from the I normal summoned this guy and now I'm just going to rain sprite cards on you. It has to be level 2. There are 200 or more level 2 monsters, probably way more than that in the game. You theoretically could go Achichi Adagnister to search for Picari and then start special summoning all of your sprites because this doesn't lock you into anything. Yeah, you, you could just do that, do your whole sprite combo and then... Like, you could link this into Dark Infant, get the field spell, uh, play the field spell, start special summoning your sprite guys, I don't know. But I don't think there's an Adagnister sprite variant or anything, it's just an example of you basically just pick your level 2 and start your turn. The most common standard level 2 monsters that saw play were Aperia and Capshell. Aperia just says, if this card is summoned, draw a card. Now you can only use that effect once per turn, but you just summon it, draw a card, do your sprite combos, and then on your opponent's turn, Elf could bring this back, you'd draw another card. And that's pretty nice with Toad Band, because Elf doesn't really have a job anymore. I personally feel that hybrid variants are better, but as far as pure sprite goes, this is not the worst thing you could be playing. There is the much better Cap Shell, uh, Cap Shell says, if this card's tributed, draw a card. If this card is used for a fusion synchro or link summon, draw a card. And if it's detached from an Xyz monster, draw a card. So it's very easy to link this for Elf to draw a card, the same way Aperia did. But then Elf can bring it back and you can overlay it, even with the Elf, for the gigantic sprite, draw another card. Where Aperia draws one, this guy has a real good knack for drawing two. And more importantly, he's a dark monster and there is an Xyz in the extra deck that we'll get to later that looks for two darks, and that is where Cap Shell really shines. So if you are looking to play just pure sprite, three blue, three jet, maybe even three red, three carrot, like just going hard, and playing 
20 something hand traps in your deck so that you actually can stop an opposing sprite player from playing the game cap shell is a very good option to be your level two normal summon in your deck that said there are plenty of other little engines that see all kinds of play for all kinds of different reasons the first and by far most popular we don't get on master duel which was deep sea diva Diva just summoning another copy of itself and making Chrystran Helka Fibrax. Thankfully, that is gone. You will be able to net deck sprite decks from the period of time that Master Duel is about to take place in and see a lot of people playing Diva. That is why. There is no reason to use her now. There is Nimble Beaver, which is the same as Diva. When you summon it, you go get a level 3 or lower Nimble monster from your deck, get another copy of himself or Angler or so on and so forth. But this one says from your deck or graveyard, and being that being a tuner doesn't super matter anymore with Fibrax Band. Beaver is a little better because if you do have your other copies milled, especially after the tier limit monsters come out, Diva couldn't use the graveyard and Beaver could. But we're going to get to Beaver in a bit. Uh, the next really potent variant was the Herald, the Viner of the Herald version, where you could just leave its level alone and dump nothing if you need it as a level 2 starter, or otherwise it was a way to just dump level 2 monsters. Uh, it was a way to just be another tuner, again for Fibrax, a way to search for Illusion of Chaos, which we're about to get in the same set, or at least in the same update. And then Illusion of Chaos gets you Magician Souls for another free body, and just so on and so forth. There are quite a lot and when it was tributed it special summoned a level two or lower fairy from your hand or deck so diviner the herald was another little variant cyberstein is another extremely popular one especially right when the meta is fresh like that cyberstein paying 5,000 life points for exterior absolutely wins the game against runic for example they can't use spell or trap cards anymore and that's like most of their deck so they are just completely screwed. And then Cyberstein is, again, a nice level 2, and it's very easy to special summon it using something like uh, something like Sprite Elf to just bring it back. And it'll even be in defense mode. And they can't target it because of the Sprite Elf, so they can't use Valor or Imperm or anything like that. And you can just win the game by making an exterior that Sprite Elf points to, which is very, very, very good. The next one is Live Twin Sprite. That is one I feel is probably going to be the most popular version of the deck on Wednesday. The Sprite stuff will come out on Tuesday. A lot of people will build pure Sprite. They will be using Gamma Burst. They will be using Pixies. Big number go burr. But so many people already have Live Twin cards. And this is the most straightforward, simple, streamlined way to play the deck where just do your same live twin crap you already know how to do, but with the best extenders ever printed. So your deck just gets a whole bunch of extra pushes, and it honestly plays like more like a live twin deck than a sprite deck at that point, where you're just trying to do all the same live twin crap you were always doing. It's not as good as the good sprite variants, because... Your deck is more focused on its weaker half, the Live Twin half. Um, live Twins right now are not good. You're not playing them. Maybe you are, the person watching this. But for the most part, you're not playing Live Twin right now, and Sprite doesn't fix the reason why. Just doing more of the same, except potentially locking yourself into level 2s so you also can't make troubles on E and stuff, is just not the way. There are much, much, much better things you could be using your level 2 normal summon on, but this is the one to be aware of. If you see someone play Kiss a Kill, they're probably playing Sprite. The next one, this one is very good, is Dark Beckoning Beast. This is my choice for the best, like, pure Sprite variant, where you would still just be playing Sprite and a bunch of hand traps, but this is, like, the first level 2 that, like, you're putting down. Dark Beckoning Beast can search for opening the, of the Spirit Gates which then gets you another copy of this and you have an extra normal summon and it's just two level twos. Um, 
Same as Deep Sea Diva, Nimble Beaver. Rather than Cap Shell or Aperia drawing a couple of cards, this guy thins your deck a couple of cards and still puts two bodies on the board the way Beaver and Diva do. But they're both dark monsters, which is very, very, very good. You can still do your whole sprite combo as you normally would, but then you just have a pair of dark monsters to turn into the Gin Buster when you're done. This is the best one in a pure sprite variant. The last and least common one that was played in the TCG, before I get to the crazy one that you can see 40 cards from right now, was Tri-Brigade Sprite. This is the one that's played by like the most Cosmo brain sprite players, where you are just trying to throw every card in your deck at your opponent's face. A single fractal just gets you like five negates and two follow-up cards. It's unbelievable what you can do. You can get a Melfi card, an Appaloosa, and a Sprite card. Like it, It's a lot just from the nature of Kit being level two and getting you free Link monsters via things like Lightheart, this fella here. So where like Fractal can dump Nerval to get Kit and you can normal Kit, Kit can banish one to special summon this card and then is herself level two, and you just, you go crazy. Double Dragon Lords, Melfi Playhouse. It's a pretty elaborate combo. I'm not going to go over all of it right now. Deck plays like six Garnets to just make the most insane board you've ever seen. And it's maybe the best variant. I think the Dark Beckoning Beast one's a little better because it does almost all the same crap. But as far as things going right, if the Tri Brigade one goes right, it's the hardest one to beat but it's also not as likely for everything to go right as it is the other variants. It also requires a lot of thinking ahead and thinking on your feet. If you get hand trapped in certain ways at certain points, it can really trip up a lot of how the deck works. But there's little things like if you draw the Melfi Playhouse, you have to put it back with the Farajit Link, stuff like that. It's a lot more complicated and more involved, and it's not going to be very friendly to Master Duel's Clock as well. These guys here, are more, especially this one, more Master Duel specific. Uh, this variant never existed in the TCG, but Master Duel has not one, but two copies of the most powerful spell card ever made, Spellbook of Judgment. And this card is absolutely ridiculous. And when I think of normal summoning Blue Boy here, and then the sprite combo being able to give me starter and smashers and secrets and knowledge and so on and so forth that's a lot of spells for spellbook of judgment and you can do things as long as you don't get level two locked you could get jaugen but you will get level two locked um there are versions of the deck where this could just be your normal summon similar to aperia that's why i've got both of these here if you just normal summon this guy and use it to get secrets to get knowledge do all your sprite combos and then knowledge this guy off the board for two draws it's like Cap Shell and everything else, but it does the thinning your deck and the drawing like crazy. Uh, but in the event that you actually use Spellbook of Judgment, it's very easy to make uh, this card using two level two monsters. And while you control another Ghost Trick monster, your opponent can't target this card for attacks. You can detach a material from this card to target a face up monster on the field with attack less than or equal to the combined attack of all Ghost Trick monsters on the field and destroy it. And if you do that monster zone, get blocked. This is not why we care. We care because Spellbook of Judgment special summons a spellcaster from your deck that's level 2, and that's her. And she says, when a level 4 or higher monster is normal or special summoned, change it to face down defense position. Fluandry is like, no one can even play the game. Like, they, it's just over. This is like Baguska on absolute steroids. Every single time they play something, it just flips face down. Uh, there has to be another Ghost Trick monster on the field to resolve the effect is the problem, which is why you make her. That is amazing, absolutely amazing variant of the deck. All you have to do is play two spells. That is not hard to do at all. The blue boy searches for one of them, although it will probably search for your judgment a lot of the time. But if you have, say, uh, blue boy and sprite starter, blue boy gets judgment, sprite starter is one, jet get you two like smashers, and you're good to go, not to mention all the other spells that are in your deck. So cute boss and Nico Musume is very, 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 very oppressive. Yeah, Ghost Trick Niko Musume is basically a floodgate. A lot of decks are just 
hurts so bad by Nikko Musume. With all those other variants out of the way, we're going to talk about the variant that I do play. I had put this together ahead of time a couple weeks ago, but as Ness pointed out, starter has actually gone to two, so I will have to make some adjustments. These are the ratios that I felt were appropriate for the sprite cards. You still want to play the Swap Frog Ronin Toten package. This is again a large reason why totally awesome gut band. Because you could make this your level 2 normal summon, send Ronan Toten, return this to your hand, and then you have an extra normal summon of a frog monster. Frog monster except for Swap Frog. If you get Swap Frog off uh, Gigantic Sprite, for example, you could return it to your hand and special summon it. And you'll see how when I go over some runic combos. I've never actually normaled Swap Frog. Hold this with Gigantic Sprite, dump another copy of itself, not your Ronan Toten. You want to play around like DD Crow and stuff. Return it to your hand, normal summon it and then dump Ronin Toten, banish the other swap frog for Ronin Toten. Frog and Toten was uh, totally awesome, crazy nonsense. This little package here still does everything it always did. This still lets you discard a water to special it from your hand, or if you just normal summon it as a level two to get things going, it's still gonna dump Ronin Toten. And when you link it off, it can still just bring the Ronin Toten back as another free level two body to link and fuse and exes with. It's very, very, very good. You still very much want to do that. There's a reason the TCG banned Ronin Toten instead of Totally Awesome. This is still crazy. The part that's the craziest is of all those level 2 options we talked about, getting back to Nimble Beaver, is this guy. Nimble Angler, when he's sent to the graveyard at all, special summons two level 3 or lower Nimble monsters from your deck. He actually gets you two beavers without normal summoning at all. All you have to do is get him in the graveyard. And you do that by discarding him from your hand. And you could do that with any runic spell. I feel by now most of us are familiar with runic cards, but what every runic card in the game has in common is a second effect that special summons a runic monster from your extra deck to your extra monster zone. And this one's two stars. All of these say put a level two monster in play that says discard a card from your hand to search for fountain. And if it discards angler, or if Swap Frog discards Angler, you also get two level three bodies for free. Which means you can overlay the Hugin and the Beaver for Gigantic Sprite, and that's still summon four. And then detaching Gigantic Sprite is summon five, and they can't Niveru you. And that can be your Sprite Blue to get your combo started, it can be Swap Frog to dump Ronin Toten. Unique to Master Duel and the OCG, it can also be Max C. And the reason why this is so unbelievably ridiculous is that Swap Frog returns one monster you control to your hand. So this is where it's really going to shine over how it worked in the TCG. It's that gigantic sprite pulling Max C from the deck and Swap Frog bouncing Max C to your hand. So in addition to your regular end board, where even that Swap Frog and Gigantic Sprite makes Elf next and so on and so forth, you will be able to search your deck for Maxi in the Sprite deck. And that is alarming, to say the least. There are all sorts of things you can do. Foolish Burial Maxi and bring it back with Elf and bounce it with Swap Frog if you really want to. But there is so many ways to do it. Now, I have lost a Sprite starter. So I'm going to put in a runic slumber because I wanted one of those in my deck anyway. I don't feel you need any hand traps. At the beginning of this, we explained that they almost don't do anything anyway. Uh, really what you're hoping to do is just open sprite card and or runic card and just go off. It's just an absolutely insane deck. IP Mascarina will let you link with your Sprite Elf on your opponent's turn into Avermax, which is very, very, very cool. Uh, Avermax backed up by the protection of IP Mascarina is very hard to deal with. This card, I don't, it's not in Master Duel yet. I don't know when it's coming, but I feel like it's gonna be in this set because this is so often used only in the Sprite deck and it's actually really old. Master Duel could have gotten this card about six months ago and just still hasn't. So I think they're saving it for the sprite pack. Uh, you detach a material from this card to target one monster your opponent controls and banish it until the end phase. It's just really good for getting stuff out of the way. You want to make sure you time that right. When you use your runic spells, you lose your following battle phase. But if you go first and use a runic spell, 
then on your opponent's turn you use a runic spell, and on your second turn in main phase one, you use another runic spell. All three of those get wiped by a single entering of that battle phase. You just enter your battle phase on turn two there, and all three uh, uses of like your runic tip, for example, all get canceled out at the same time, and you are allowed to attack on the following battle phase. Uh, if this card in its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target banished monsters up to the number of materials this card had and shuffle them into the deck. So, there's that too. Little 1900, 1600 guy. We also have Centauria and Zeus, very common thing to do, and Gin Buster, which is made with two level two darks. So that's going to be that Dark Beckoning Beast package, for example, but it's most often Jet and Blue make this card, very, very often. During either player's turn, when an effect of an opponent's monster is activated, you can detach two Xyz materials from this card, negate the activation, and if you do, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. So it's very, very strong to just have Elf pointing at this guy, detaches two, negates their thing, and then you use Sprite Smashers, which requires you to banish a level, rank, or link two you control. You just pick him, banish him off the field in their card, and that's two very hard to play through interrupts in addition to anything else your deck has put up, including probably Max C, but uh, not uncommon for you to have like an IP Mascarina to go into Avermax after you do this. Um, you've given them a couple of negates and then you go into Avermax and mess them up really bad. It does miss Toad a lot, obviously. The best board was always to just have Elf pointing at Gin Buster and Toad. That's what this deck did every single duel. And we don't have Toad to make anymore. So you're going to want to, instead of making Toad, make IP Mascarina or Oni Bimaru or Cat Shark or Mannequin Cat. There is a lot of options. This thing allows you to make Zeus so easily. <laughs> so that's also really nice. It cannot be destroyed by battle while it has material. Balances things off the field. Very nice. Very strong. But for the most part, this is just Runic doing crazy Runic crap that it has always been doing but with front row, and where Sprite has always struggled is with things like Regeki, Dark Ruler No More, and so on, and these runic cards give you a back row that they still have to play through, and that is everything. That is what makes this the best deck in the game. Some version of this deck list within two or three cards will be the best deck on Master Duel.